acrylic, gouache, oil, and watercolor paint. Colored pencils and inktense pencils, alcohol inks, alcohol markers, watercolor markers, brush markers, and finally, paint markers. A lot of paint markers. All these supplies and only a few dodgy swatches in an even dodgier sketchbook. So what to do about it? I could just sit here and swatch them all out on paper or into some kind of book. And I know some people really enjoy that, but to me, that many supplies? Oh, sounds like a bit of a snooze fest. But I really do need to get all my supplies swatched out just to make my life a little bit easier when I'm starting out on projects. It's lucky then last week I was watching another YouTuber, Sketches and Scrubs, and she totally inspired me to create my own swatch book. While endless little blotches of colour repeatedly applied to the page is rather dull, the swatch book she created caught my eye. Her book looks like a piece of art itself, with pages of flowers and leaves, paint tubes and paintbrushes. And it's the little tubes and brushes that got my brain fired up and inspired to create my own beautiful swatch book. But of course, I have to do it my own way and put my own little spin on it. I want to create pages of little art supplies that sketched out that are going to match the supplies that I will be swatching. So little tubes of paint for my acrylic paint, little pictures of markers for my Posca pens and other paint markers, and little pictures of pencils for, well, pencils. I think you get the idea. As for the physical swatch book, I want to use this. It's a wooden book look-alike, and I can store the pages loosely within it, but we'll get to that later. I want to start out by sketching my little designs. I've already done a rough plan, but I'm going to sketch all the items with pencil, then go over them with a black fine liner. I've started with the watercolour pans. All my swatch cards will be A5 in size, and I'll use appropriate paper for each supply. So I'm using watercolour paper for these. I will need four pages as I have four different sets. Yes, I am even swatching out my cheap supplies, as I still do use them on the rare occasion. I want the pan areas to have some black lines on them, so when I apply the paint swatch, I will see how much the paint covers the line work. This is what I learned from watching sketches and scrubs. She goes into so much more detail on swatching in her video, so I'm gonna link it below for you guys. She really knows what she's talking about and her videos are very chill and relaxing to watch. Next, let's draw some paint tubes for my acrylics. For this one, I draw one acrylic paint tube, then I scan the image into my computer. I don't have Photoshop, so instead I use a website called Canva to remove the background so that I'm just left with the black outline. Then I transfer that image to Microsoft Publisher, then print off several copies onto mixed media paper. I use this same method for the coloured pencils, alcohol markers, and paint markers. While this method is fine for the pencils, I know it's not ideal for the wet medium as my printer is a laser jet so the lines will get smudged and run. But as I have so many of these to do, I didn't want to be tracing hundreds of little pictures. Ain't nobody got time for that. For the gouache, I draw a picture of a filbert paintbrush, well, the brush end anyway, covered in paint. Then a little square glass bottle for the alcohol inks. And another paintbrush head for the brush markers. Lastly, for my small selection of oil paints, I draw a paint palette and the blobs will be the swatches. Done. That took forever, but now we're up to the good part, colouring. First up, we have the paint markers. So many paint markers, like ridiculous amounts of paint markers. Why so many? Well, a few months back, I did a paint pen review, comparing and testing out paint pens cheaper than Posca. And in that review, I stumbled across a few good brands, like the Tooley Art in the medium tip, Artship in the brush tip, and the Magi 3-in-1. I also exposed a few real dud brands but two of the brands I gave an okay rating to at the time, I have now changed my mind and I think they're absolute garbage. And they are the New Top and the Fly C. Due to their plastic fine tips, they clog up. And after their initial use, 
they are really annoying to try and get the paint flowing again. I tried to swatch these out, but I got so frustrated with them, I gave up. If you want to see my full review on paint markers cheaper than Posca, I'll link the video down below. I'd like to note that while swatching out these paint pens, I was using the Fabriano Mixed Media Paper and it was working great. On to the alcohol markers. Here I have the 72 set of Ohuhu brush and fine tip markers, which I love. Again, I've used the Fabriano Mixed Media Paper and the two are working well together. For one side of the marker swatches, I'm layering three times, the middle of the marker twice, and I'm trying to only have a single layer on the other side, just to give myself a visual of the difference in layers. As I was swatching, I noticed two of the fine tip sides of the markers had dried out, while the brush ends were still mm, moist, wet. I wonder if it's because of the new way I'm storing them, on an angle rather than laying flat. Question, what's the best way to store an alcohol marker? I'm sure I could look it up, but I know you, my viewers, you're very knowledgeable and you'll let me know. On to the pencils. And I've got two brands in the standard pencils I wanna swatch out. First up are my new Polychromos. I'm seriously enjoying these pencils. They are so nice to use and I found them so handy for the finer details, like for my last video when I was coloring Cinderella. While swatching the pencils, I'm making sure I'm fully burnishing the mixed media paper on one end of the pencil swatch. But on the other end, I'm putting down a lighter layer. Again, this visual information might be handy when I'm referencing my swatches for projects. The other set of pencils I own are the Prismacolors. I've had these for a while and I do love the way they blend and how easy they are to layer. But I do get a little frustrated with how crumbly they are. Some of them in this set are near on impossible to sharpen and a few do not hold a point at all. Okay, as nice as it is having these lovely little pictures to color in for my swatches with this many art supplies to do all at one time is getting a little tedious. So let's take a break and move on to painting the box book thing that will be housing all these paint cards. So it's a wooden box in the shape of a book, obviously Einstein. So let's paint it to look like a book, not an ordinary book, a sketchbook, but not a sketchbook that you would do sketches in, a sketchbook that has been sketched to look like a book, a book that's been sketched to look like a book. No, a book that's been sketched to look like a book that's been sketched. Are you with me? carry out my brilliant plan, I firstly give the whole book a few coats of gesso. As for picking the colours for this book box thing, I'm having trouble pinning down what colours to use. So I pick out a card from my trusty colour cubes that I think will look nice and start mixing up some acrylic paint. Now, if I'd planned ahead, I would have done my acrylic paint swatches already as now I need to swatch my paint so I know what base colours I have before mixing up my colours. I tell ya, the six P's are really important. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Anyway, I get my base colour mixed in two different shades, which turn out too dark and I have to lighten them later, and get to painting. I want to use the darker shade for the edges of the book and the lighter shade in the middle, just so it's not looking completely flat. As I want to blend the two shades together, I'm using some tips I learned from two different YouTubers. The first is from Chloe Rose, and that is don't clean your brush between colors. The second tip is from Rose Requin Crafts, and that is water down the paint on your brush where you are trying to do the blend. Both tips are helping, but I'm having trouble as the acrylic paint dries too fast before I can get a nice blend happening. So I'm going to use this acrylic paint retarder that I purchased some months ago. And you just mix some in with the paint and it makes the paint dry a bit slower. Works super well too. It's definitely buying me some time and I'm getting the whole blend on the book done better. Once that colour is done, I pick the lightest of the colours for the page part of the book. I 
Again, I mix up the color far too dark and go back in with a lighter shade. Didn't realize that's still too dark and go lighter again. For the inside, I'll use one of the darker colors to paint it. No blending in here, just one flat color will be fine. Then on the cover of the book, I used the remaining color to do the writing. My swatch book. I just couldn't come up with a more creative name than that. Now this is where the sketchy part comes in. Going back in with a black acrylic paint marker, I draw on an outline around all the edges of the book. I got this idea from seeing those 2D looking cakes. I thought it would help tie the book in with the swatch cards as they are all a black outline too. Plus, this book will live in my background once complete. And I've got a creative project in the pipeline for my background in the coming months. And this should tie in with that quite well. I don't want to give away too much, but it has something to do with combining an art piece from a Create This Book episode I did, plus polymer clay. With that done, it's time to get the rest of these swatch cards completed. Moving on to the watercolour sets, I'm only swatching out three of my four sets. Two of those are my real cheapies. One is an average set but my brand new unused set by Windsor & Newton will remain unused today. As I received this in the mail last week, it's a product that I ordered from another YouTuber. I'm not gonna say what it is or which YouTuber I ordered it from, but I will be testing this out along with the Windsor & Newton watercolor paints in a future video, hopefully my next video. But if you want to take a guess as to what it is and which YouTuber I ordered it from, leave a comment down below. Oh, I can't wait to open them. <laughs> the next item to swatch is the Windsor & Newton brush markers. I've not used these before, not totally sure what to do with them, but after speed watching a few videos, I just draw them onto the paper and use a water brush to drag the colour out. Next, I'll quickly blob on the few oil colour paints that I have and realise I probably should have done these first as they need a few days to dry. Oh well, hindsight's a brilliant thing. Another medium I haven't used yet, unless you count failing to colour a white candle, is alcohol inks. Again, I don't know how to use them, so I'm just going to dab them onto the swatch cards, hope for the best and call it done. If I realize later when I actually learn how to use these that I've done something seriously wrong, I'll redo these swatches. And lastly, my acrylic paints. I use a lot of acrylic paint, not really for painting pictures, but for customizing and painting on stuff. And I don't actually really own a good quality set of acrylic paint, except for a few tubes of white, which is actually a handy tip. 
if you can't afford to invest in super good quality paints, I just buy average branded ones like Montmartre and then mix a good quality white in with the colors. It works for me as I lighten my colors a lot. So the better quality white helps improve the paint, I think anyway, but don't quote me on that as I'm not an expert. With all the swatch cards finally done and the box fully dry, I just put the cards into the box and that's it. I can't believe I got all that done. Took a bloody long time, but well worth it. I love how it looks as a complete package. And from here on out, as I get new supplies, I can just print or trace these designs onto the appropriate paper and color the little pictures in. It works for me. I wonder if something like that would appeal to you guys or work for you. Anyway, I hope this video has given you some creative inspiration and I hope to see you next time.